Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the traditional alternatives of solar and wind are certainly net losers in the shale in industry. It is difficult for me to envision natural gas prices ever rising above $6 again, because right now shale gas is a waste product. Everybody is after the oil because oil is at $100. The natural gas is coming up as a byproduct. It's being dumped on the market for below the cost of production in most cases. As long as that is the situation, People will go out and drill for natural gas should the prices ever rise. We, we have infrastructure developed in places like the back end and places like the, the Fayetteville uh, that can be brought online in as little as four to six months. So instead of the old price cycle of being three to six years for people having to go out and bring new stuff online in order to draw prices, now the stuff's already there. It just has to be kind of turned on, maybe a little bit of testing. Same thing with the Gulf of Mexico offshore. That can be brought back online in probably a year or two. So natural gas prices are probably condemned to be in the low single digits for at least another 10 years, at least until our gross consumption of it rises to a level that it can actually absorb everything that is being produced. And if you're a wind producer or a solar producer, this is a real problem. Your prices have come down, but it hasn't come down below the cost of production, which is where natural gas is. So this is driving, this has already driven fuel oil out of the market, it's driving coal out of the market, and I don't want to say it's going to drive the alternatives out because there's federal subsidies and you certainly have the president's push. You'll probably have several presidents from now on pushing for that. But it's going to prevent it from becoming baseload. The only thing that could change, the only thing that could bring solar and wind into baseload is if we can figure out batteries. Right now, we can't build batteries that are big enough and strong enough and have the storage capacity to power a house economically viably, much less a city. If we can figure that out, however, then solar goes from being a laggard to a leader because you can store up energy during the day and bleed it off of the batteries at night. But we're not there yet. All right, well, thank you very much. Oh, wait, one more, sorry. Biotech acceptance? Uh, the core opposition to biotech is in Europe. Europe is self-sufficient in food. The rest of the world is broadly not. Uh, as global trade becomes more problematic, as people go from realizing that the Americans control the global network to will only be guaranteeing the shipments that we choose, I have a feeling that large portions of the world are going to become a little bit more ameliorable. They're going to be a little bit more willing to talk with the United States on, on GMO. Uh, that's not a hard prediction. Foodstuffs are, can be persnickety. People are very sensitive about what they put in their bodies. Doesn't matter if there's anything to back up what is. <laughs> it doesn't matter if the scientific facts are on their side or not. Uh, but I do see more flexibility in the international system, particularly as regards to the countries that we choose to be our trading partners. All right. Well, thank you very much. You've been a fantastic audience.